Hi. Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. A secret clan of warriors tell the legend of the great white ninja who would become a master like no other. Young Haru is raised just like the others, but with the expectation that he may be the one of whom the legend speaks. Though as he grew into adulthood it was soon evident that he was not the one. Captain of the ninja team Gobei defends Haru's honor to Father Sensei, while also calling him fat, a fool, and an embarrassment. After Sensei teaches his students how to project to the plane of enlightenment, the class arrive back on Earth for their graduation ceremony. The new ninjas all receive the medallion of the Tengu warrior, though Haru's lack of skills keep him from transitioning with the rest, but he is still happy for his brother Gobei. Big brother. That night during a ninja's only exercise, Haru is left to defend the temple and sees fit to dress like one of the gang and practice for next year's tryouts. His training is cut short by the American Sally Jones, who has come to the dojo to hire a ninja, and is impressed by Haru's skills. Surprised to see such a pale person Sally is shown scrolls of the legend of the great white ninja. After accidentally reading her the story of the 18-year-old geisha twins, also a great story, he begins to tell her his. But gets not 10 words in before burning 5 generations of teachings. Trying to impress Sally with his skills of handling a triple staff, Haru breaks the shrine of the fallen ninja warriors, spilling the ashes of Master Go, Tom Po, and Kai. Kai? Sally just needs a ninja for his stealth skills for simple recon, her boyfriend is sus and she wants to tail him. Three. Which is lucky because Haru's highest grades were in stealth. Haru accepts this brave task and is told not to try contact her for the rest of the mission. Down at the Tokyo docks Haru attempts to spy on Sally's boyfriend, struggling a bit to get inside the compound but eventually finding a way. We see that Sally's boyfriend Martin Tanley is into counterfeit money, though he is angry that half of his printing plates are being held up in Los Angeles. Haru arrives late only to be blamed for the murder of one of Tanley's associates. Back at the temple Haru argues with Sensei about Sally, as father has discovered her real name is Allison Page and suspects she just wanted a patsy for the murder. Perhaps. Haru disagrees and says that his ninja intuition is telling him she is in trouble, so he will travel to the hills of Beverly to save her. My mission is clear. The next day he says his goodbyes to the village, including his brother who has always looked out for him, and his father who gives him gold for the trip. Haru has problems with the airport bus's safety standards, and Sensei tells Gobei that his task is to take care of his brother without being noticed. Anything but that. Haru's customs don't translate to the real world well and he gets in constant trouble during the flight. When arriving in LA he rents a car, to which Gobei uses his skills of stealth to hide inside unnoticed. He tracks Allison to a Beverly Hills hotel with a pack of matches, and although all rooms are booked out for the next six months he convinces the receptionist with some gold coins. We don't take wampum. After getting help to his room by bellboy Joey Washington, Haru makes sure the room is safe. He proceeds to tell Joey that he is in fact a ninja. Ninja? You're a ninja? And Joey is the first person who has ever been impressed by his skills as such. Living in a bad area of town, Joey begs Haru to teach him anything he can. So Haru takes him under his wing, teaching him all he knows including the technique of ripping a man's head off. The two stop off and buy some new clothes for Haru to blend in. Thank you. And he sends Joey home to begin the search by randomly looking at blonde's faces. Sally? Still going unnoticed Gobei spots Allison driving past and pops her tire, causing Haru's search to finally pay off. A worried looking Allison doesn't want his help though and tells him to leave, but the stubborn Haru is determined to save her. He follows Tanley to a strip club where a gang boss discusses handing over the plates to Tanley and his bodyguard Nobu. We cut the bullshit? As Haru tries to locate Tanley he gets distracted by all the lovely actresses, eventually succumbing to their dance moves and joining in. When his lack of talent gets him thrown off the stage and into the trash outside, Nobu beats down the gangsters to retrieve the counterfeit plates, and once again unknowingly frames Haru for the murders. Back at the hotel, Joey chases a chicken as his first step in ninja training, while Haru meditates to speak with his father. Sensei bestows upon his son the wisdom to use a phone book in order to track down Tanley. Yes. Back on Earth Haru takes father's advice, and finds Tanley guarded by dogs which he cleverly distracts. When that doesn't work Gobei once again saves Haru. Using a grapple hook to scale the wall, Haru drops in on Allison searching through Tanley's office. She admits to her name being Allison but tells him that she suspects Tanley killed her sister, and is dating him in search of evidence. Finding his whereabouts through his journal, Haru disguises himself as a Japanese restaurant chef. And while preparing their meal Haru and a womanly Gobei hear that they plan to hire an ink specialist named Chet Walters. Just then a rival gang shows up to the restaurant planning on eliminating Tanley, but Haru accidentally kills their assassin so the two brothers are forced to fight the gang off and escape. 
Since Tanley saw Allison at the restaurant Haru brings her to his hotel room where they turn in for the night. The next day the two go to see the ink specialist Chet, where Haru tries the usual tricks to knock him out, but it takes the teamwork of Allison. Tying him up Haru prepares some laughing mushrooms for Chet, but when Chet sneezes they all get infected. <laughs> laughing their way through a conversation they discover when Tanley is to meet Chet next, and Haru and Allison almost have a moment. I was merely trying to get close to the temple, not inside, I... Haru then disguises himself as Chet Walters in order to get inside Tanley's operation, being taken blindfold to his warehouse but being followed by Allison. Expecting Chet to create the ink profile for their counterfeit oh. money, Fake Chet has a mishap with his mustache but Gobei saves him before anyone notices. Clearly having no clue what he is doing in regards to coloring of the notes, Haru steals the plates but is discovered on his way out. I am Haru of the Takagura Dojo. Trying to evade Tanley's henchman Haru is on his own, after Gobei is taken out with crossfire. Overwhelmed he is eventually captured. Haru is kept in a van while Tanley has a meeting to exchange the plates, but just robs the other gang and takes them instead. Meanwhile having followed them there, Allison frees Haru from the back of the van, and then gets captured making a phone call on Tanley's way out. Haru! As the police arrive to the scene about to arrest Haru, Gobei using a smoke bomb and great skills takes Haru's place. After escaping prison Gobei talks to Sensei about coming home, but hides behind some clouds when Haru approaches and listens in. He hears that all Haru ever wanted was to be a great ninja like Gobei. But Sensei tells Haru that for all Gobei's talents he will never be a great ninja without having a heart as big as Haru's. Sensei sends him back to Earth to save Allison as his duty as a ninja, calling him ninja for the very first time. Yes, I guess I did. Haru grabs his new attire and gears up for a showdown, recruiting Joey to help him find Tanley's warehouse. What? Come on. Blindfolding himself to get into the same state of mind as when he was first taken, Haru begins leading them around the city telling Joey to follow his words to a T. When that doesn't work, Gobei just knocks Joey out and drives them there, having Haru believe his ninja intuition solved the problem. Joey? Finding no other way inside, Haru climbs a palm tree and uses its flexibility to launch himself into the compound. With Allison tied up with a bomb he doesn't have much time, but is instantly spotted and chased into a corner by Tanley's henchman. Suddenly Big Brother reveals himself, and Haru has his biggest dream fulfilled of fighting alongside Gobei. As the two more or less beat the henchman up, Gobei distracts the guards while Haru races off to free Allison. Allison. Using a forklift he carefully gains access to the bomb, where after first defusing a telephone, he cuts the timer down to 5 minutes. Gobei begins to get defeated, and Haru begins to hear his screams. With only 4 minutes to go, he ninja leaps from a balcony onto the henchman. Finally mustering the great white ninja strength since this is the first time someone has messed with his brother. Haru saves Gobei's life but the two are left facing off Nobu and two guards. The ninja apprentice Joey manages to subdue one of the guards all by himself, and the other are made to scissor by the brothers. Hanley shows up shooting wildly at Haru, but Haru manages to deceive him with ninja trickery. In typical Haru fashion he manages to knock Gobei out with collateral damage, before obtaining great white status again and deflecting all of Tanley's bullets until he is out. He then easily defeats the untrained Martin. Rushing back to Allison Haru finds a harpoon gun, firing it through the wall and into a truck driven by an escaping Tanley. Causing the harpoon to crash through the wall collecting the bomb on its way, and landing in the back of the truck with Tanley. And it blows. The great white ninja has saved the day and receives a cheap touch from Allison, before exiting the building. Gobei survives the head injury, Tanley and his men are arrested, and Joey begins the legend of the great black ninja. Back in Japan, Haru receives the MVP medallion from his brother, and informs Sensei that he will be returning to Beverly Hills to live with his girlfriend Allison. Leaving with Haru having dropped his grappling hook, Gobei is dragged along behind the bus and launched into the sea. Ah! Oh, yeah. hey, Gobei. Gobei survives though. And the movie ends. Beverly Hills Ninja is a 1997 comedy film directed by Dennis Dugan and written by Mark Feldberg and Mitch Klebanoff. When asked what his favorite movie was Christian Bale named this as his favorite comedy, though said he's only ever watched it twice. Only when I have ceased to breathe will I be dead. Chris Farley demanded that Chris Rock be in the movie, and at one point wouldn't do the movie without him. Farley's best days on the set were the days that Rock was there. Man, that was dope! This movie has multiple connections to Mortal Kombat, including Robin Shu who portrayed Liu Kang, and Keith Cook who portrayed both Reptile and Sub-Zero. 
Both movies also feature music composed by George S. Clinton. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Maybe peek at the sacred object.